students welcome to the evs class so our day starts with our day starts with some of the using some of the things like water isn't it so daily when we are going to start our life with the water we use the water for drinking we use the for water for the bathing isn't it like that we are going to use lots of the some of the materials that may get naturally isn't it for example we used to breathe the oxygen that is oxygen which is present in the air that is also we are going to take on from the nature isn't it but what are those what are the general materials these materials are called it as the natural resources so today in the today's session in the uh, lesson of natural resources we are going to study what are natural resources what are the types of the natural resources and so what are the renewable natural resources and what are non renewable natural resources and what are the uses of that uh, natural resources that's we discuss in today's session so first i am going to start this session with the what are natural resources so any materials any materials any materials or any matter any materials which are which are useful to man and and for living beings any natural materials which are useful for the man and which are useful for the living beings are going to be called it as the natural resources the any materials which we are going to get from the nature is it may be a wood is it may be a plant is it may be a flower is it may be a soil isn't it for example soil air light water and you are using the petrol petrol diesel isn't it etc these are all these materials these are all materials which we are going to get from the nature even though we are going to get the some of the minerals like for example we have the iron metals now but the iron metal it will be come from the minerals those are all minerals which are coming from the which we are going to get from the nature so therefore these are all materials that are soil air light water petrol diesel isn't it and the minerals these are all called it as a natural resources they are present in the nature we are going to get that materials from the nature directly so the resources which are present in the nature which are useful for the man and the living beings are called it as a natural resources and by the help of the the availability availability of the natural resources we are going to differentiate the natural natural resources into two types that are renewable natural resources and non renewable natural resources what are renewable natural resources what are non renewable natural resources so renewable natural resources are nothing but they are present they are present in the nature in a large quantity if by the use of the man they are not going to be get replenished that is they gone they can't get completed the natural resources which are present in a high range in a nature have you clear here what are renewable natural resources here the natural resources they are present in a large amount in a nature they are not going to be get replenished by the use of the man and the living being such a type of the renewable natural such a type of the natural resources are called it as a renewable natural resources for example for the renewable natural resources light air water soil for example i am taking here a light we get the light from the sun so the light from we are going to get the light from the sun that is the solar energy it is the present in the nature in a unlimited quantity so this solar energy present in the nature in unlimited quantity we can get 
very high amount of the solar energy we can get very high amount of the solar light but it can't be get replenished isn't it it is not get big get completed by the usage of the solar energy but when we are going to consider the petroleum that is a petrol diesel these are present in the earth crust very in the small amount if we are going to use in a more in a we are going to use in continuously they are going to be get replenished they are completed isn't it so such type of the natural resources are called it as a non renewable natural resources so what are renewable natural resources here the sum of the resources are not get completed or not get replenished by the use, use of usage of the human beings such type of the renewable such type of the natural resources are called it as a renewable natural resources example for the renewable natural resources are light air water and the soil so what is non renewable natural resources here so these non renewable natural resources they are going to be get completed by by the high use of the man because in the nature they are present in the very small quantity is it clear so these these resources they are present in the nature in a very small quantity due to the continuous use of the human beings they are going to be get replenished at the one time and such type of the resources are called it as a non renewable resources so that are nothing but petroleum petrol diesel the petrol and diesel are the sub products of the petroleum the rough oil which we are going to call it as a petroleum the petrol and diesel are get by the petroleum and the natural gas and minerals etc these are all non renewable natural resources once again i am repeating here what are renewable natural resources and what are non renewable natural resources the the resources which doesn't get replenished by the continuous use of the human beings are called it as a renewable natural resources the resources which doesn't get replenished by the continuous use of the human beings are called it as a non renewable natural resources so now we are going to consider first renewable natural resources some of the renewable natural resources and what are their uses first i am considering under the renewable natural resources the solar energy so we are going to get the solar energy by the only one source that is the sun we get the solar energy light energy and heat energy by the sun it is the only one source the big source which we are going to have to get the heat and the light energy it is very essential for solar energy it is very essential for the plants to make their own food isn't it as you know already it's the plants the the plants are going to utilize the solar light energy to form the food in their plants therefore the one use of the solar energy that is most wonderful use of the solar energy it is to prepare a food for the plants why because it is most wonderful we are going to get the food from the plants isn't it we are going to get the food from the plants if the plants doesn't use the solar energy then we doesn't get the food so it is most important here one of the most important of the solar energy is the plants are going to be utilize the solar energy to prepare their own food and second one is the solar energy it is utilized as a light energy and solar energy also it is also utilized that is used in our homes by by the help of the some of the solar equipments like solar light solar water heating solar water heater solar oven so nowadays some of the uh, ovens are com comes some of the gases are comes which are runs over the solar energy isn't it the solar light which will uh, which is present in our home that will be also run by the help of the light energy so these are all uses of the solar energy and also we get the this, this uh, we, we are going to use this solar energies that is in the solar panel which is connected to the some of the uh, so what it is uh, what we are going to say that some of the rockets they are going in nowadays some of the vehicles are going to be run with the help of the solar energy what happen here the vehicles are covered with the solar panels that panels they are going to extract they are going to 
absorb this light energy and they convert that light energy into electrical energy with the help of the electrical energy they are going to be running so the another one use of the solar energy is in the solar vehicles we are going to use and also we use the solar energy to boil our water in with the help of solar water heater isn't it and also so in the satellites in the satellites you have to remember satellites are present in the sky they are present in the sky we are not going to provide any electrical energy from the earth towards sky because it is too far from the sky isn't it it is not possible to provide any electrical energy any energies by the with the help of the petrol or diesel it is impossible but how they are going to get the energy how they are work how in, on the what basis they are going to work but they utilizes that satellites have a some of the solar panels and that solar panels absorbs the light energy and that light energy get converted into an electrical energy that electrical energy energy will be utilized by the satellites and <coughs> they works isn't it you are using the mobile the mobile phones are going to be work with the help of the satellites isn't it so we, with the help of the solar energy these are all the all the equipments are going to be run so it is the most important energy that is one of the most important of the na important natural resource that is the solar energy that it is utilized by us and second another one most important uh, renewable natural resource that is nothing but the soil so soil we are going to run on the soil we are going to walk on the soil and we are going to grow some our plants on the soil soil it is another one most important natural resource which we are going to utilize in our daily life so for to get the food we have to grow the some of the plants or a crop so where we are going to grow the crop is it possible to grow the crop in the air no it is not possible so we need the soil so you have to remember the soil it is very it takes a very long time to make the soil some amount of the soil for example to make about 3 cm of the soil i am considering from the earth surface about only 3 cm of the soil to form a 3 cm of the soil the earth takes about 500 to 1500 years you have to remember the soil it is formed by the rocks the rocks are going to be distracted and becomes it becomes a soil but to make about only 3 cm of the soil only to make only 3 cm of the soil the earth takes about 500 to 1500 500 years time you have to remember it how much long time it takes to make the soil here so it is a very important thing but this soil will be that is it is its soil will be destroyed as a blowed by the some of the natural disasters but we are going to convert or we are going to prevent the soil erosion by making some of the yeah, some of the with the help of the some of the taking some of the actions we are going to uh, control the soil erosion why because if the upper layer of the soil will be blowed out completely then it is very difficult to grow the plants it is very difficult to grow the crop if it is very difficult to grow the plants or grow the crops then we doesn't get the food materials isn't it if it is blow completely what happens the, the land it is not usable it becomes desert in the deserts we are not going to saw anything isn't it it becomes a, looks like a desert what we are going to do then in that time so it is very difficult to live on the earth if the if the first layer that is the soil layer of the earth will be blown out away so what we are going to make here we are going to take some of the precautions or the preventions to control the soil erosion so first i am going to discuss what are the uses of the soil here that is we are going to use the we, we are going to use the soil for the cropping for the planting isn't it and also we get the sum of the minerals like a gold iron the all the metals and non metals which are present in the soil they, we are going to get that materials from the soil that is another one use of the soil here so these are all the uses of the soil what happens here some of the times we due to the some of the natural disasters like earthquake isn't it flooding what happens if the flooding happens 
the river will be flows very high speed and the when the river will flows with a very high speed it always absorbs or it always covers and it it always covers the sum of the earth surface and it brings the upper layer of the soil with the water in that case all the usable all the useful soil all the one the one of the most important that is a useful soil will be blown away due to the force of the water so it that is nothing but that condition it is nothing but it is called it as a soil erosion and also in another one case due to the uh, due to the high pressured air due to the high pressured air the air also will be blown away so that is also called it as a soil erosion and also in the some of the natural disasters like a earthquake what happens the all the soil will be goes uh, under the earth and that time also the soil will be eroded that is soil erosion will be happen so it is very necessary to control the soil erosion here why we are going to control the soil erosion because the upper layer of the soil will be go blown away what happens it is not used the land it is not useful for to grow any crops isn't it so if it is not useful for to grow any crops then it is very difficult to get the food so that's why we have to control that soil erosion by taking some of the prevention here this prevention steps what are the prevention steps that is first we have to grow more plants so how it how we can prevent by growing the more plants the soil erosion remember here if the rain will falls if very high rain will be falls what happens the water which comes from the rain which blows away the soil which is present on the upper surface of the earth if we are going to grow the more plants what happen the roots of the plants are going to be they are going to hold the soil they are going to hold tightly the soil and they doesn't give up the soil to blow away for the water so with the help of the more growing more plants we can prevents the soil erosion here and another one thing here the by the we are by growing the more amount of the grass grasslands by conserving the grasslands we can prevent the soil erosion here for example if we if we are going to be, if you are going to doesn't uh, grow the grasslands here what happens the grass the grassland if there is a no grassland the water will easily blow the upper surface of the soil which is present on the earth surface if we are going to grow more grasslands what happens the roots of the grass absorbs of the grass gra the roots of the grass held the soil the upper layer of the soil very tightly and it doesn't blow away due to the water so by the help of uh, by the help of growing more plants we can prevent the soil erosion here and second one is using contour farming the contour farming it is one of the scientific farming it helps to prevent the soil erosion what is contour farming it is step by step farming isn't it we are going to farm the crops we are going to we are going to sow the crops we are going to crops the we are going to sow the crops in a such a way that there is a no soil erosion will be happen for example if if the water will be runs in this way i am considering imagine that if this is your field if the water will be runs the rain water will moves in this way then we are going to sow the crops in this way what happens here so it takes some of the time to go the water here and it prevents the soil it, it prevents the blowing of the soil with uh, by the water and it also help to prevent the soil erosion here so under one method under one prevention step which we are going to control the soil erosion it is nothing but using contour farming it is a wonderful scientific farming type of a scientific farming which will helpful to prevent the soil erosion and under one step which we are going to take the uh, to uh, to prevent the soil erosion it is nothing but building retain walls see building retain walls it is nothing but so we are going to build some of the obstacles where the water will be flows isn't it like the dams 
so if you are going to see in your fields some of the walls are present at the uh, at any ends so why we are going to make that walls because to prevent the soil erosion by building this by building retain walls we are going to control the soil erosion and another one here creating wind wind breakers so as i told already the wind also blow the upper layer of the soil and the high pressured wind also causes the soil erosion so by creating wind breakers we can prevent the soil erosion these are the most important steps which we are going to follow to control the soil erosion this is all about the under one renewable natural resources most important renewable natural resources that is nothing but soil now i am going to consider the another one important most important natural resource that is forest so as the when we are going to herd the forest in our imagination we are going to see the big trees isn't it the the hills containing the big trees and the, some of the wild animals are present in the forest some of the different types of the fruits are present in the forest some of the different types of the insects are present in the forest and also we see some of the different useful medicinal plants are present in the forest isn't it forest the forest these are with the one of the most important renewable natural resources which we have why because about 60 to 70% of the oxygen which we are get from only by the forests here because forest has a large number of trees or the plants the plants are going to release the oxygen which we are going to use for our breathing process so for to get a good air the first thing the forest the, these forests are very helpful here so what is what are the uses of the forest here as i told already what are present in the forest the big plants are present so with the help of the plants we get the wood isn't it for example to construct our building to to construct our home the wood is very required element here to so we are going to get the wood from the forest plants isn't it and second thing i am considering here another one most important use of the forest that is we get the oxygen and the third one as i told already the forest contains different types of the medicinal plants we are going to get the medicines from the forest here and fourth one here the forest contains different types of the fruits some of the fruits we are going to get from the forest and you have to remember forest provides the shelter for the tribal community in the community chapter i discussed here that the tribal peoples are going to be live in the forest or in the hills isn't it so these forest provides the shelter for the tribal community peoples the, the forest they are going to give the life for the tribal community peoples from the forest they are going to live they have in the forest they are going to live isn't it so it is under one use of the forest here and also we get some of the different types of the flowers from the forest that's are useful for our medicinal uses also that's also we are going to get from forest and you have to remember the good quality of the honey the good quality of the honey that also which we are going to get from the forest here and another one most wonderful thing that is we get the rain the forests are the main important things which are going to play an important role in the raining so they are going to they, they are going to avoid or they are going to stop the clouds which are which 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 uh, which the rains comes from the cloud they are going to stop the moving of the clouds and that place we get more rain so the forests are the more important thing here if there is a forest there is a life if there is a no forest there is a no life you have to remember this thing here and also we get some of the animal wild animals we are going to see some of the wild animals in the forest that is also another one under one use of the forest here but what happens here by the human things by the human activities large amount of the forest will be 
washed out that is will be get a deplenished by the human usage so we are going to control that the unwanted human activities of the deforestation because if there is a no forest there is a no life you have to remember here so to what happens why the deforestation deforestation happens here to the urbanizing to the urbanizing of the small villages they have the sum of the villages present near to the forest when that villages they are get converted into the urban areas what happens here the large amount of the forest will be get deplenished that is the deforestation happens so we are going to control the deforestation by controlling the urbanization and also what happens here sometimes we are going to build some of the unnecessary buildings so or we are going to construct unnecessary dams due to the construction of the unnecessary dams large amount of the forest will be deforested here so we are going to prevent or we are going to conserve the forest by preventing the by restricting unnecessary construction of the dams and uh, and the another one conservation step to conserve the forest are restricting unnecessary falling of trees so we are going to cut we are going some of sometimes the it is unnecessarily the some of the plants which are present in the forest are going to be fall so to controlling the unnecessary falling of the trees we can conserve the forest here and government of india taken a one step ahead to conserve the forest with the help of the amendment that amendment that is 1988 national forest policy they taken some of the prevention methods or the prevention actions to conserve the forest here according to this law the cutting of the trees in the conserved area so we are having some of the conserved forest in our karnataka also they are going to be called as the conserved forest in the conserved for forest the cutting of the tree is prohibited so that that last will be made by our indian government to prevent the forest here or to conserve the forest here isn't it so some of the steps are going to be taken from the government of india to conserve the forest why because these are the most important natural resource which we have so with that if there is a like once again i am repeating here where there is a more forest there is a more life if there is a no forest there is a no life therefore the government of india taken major steps to conserve the forest here and we have to remember some of the persons very important persons which they are going to be contributed for the prevention of, for the conservation of the forest are one it is that is sundarlal bahugun the sundarlal bahugun if who who fought it against the cutting of the trees with his with his activity that is called it as a chipko movement he 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 make a movement to control the unnecessary cutting of the trees by the with the help of the chipko movement and also one of the another one important person from our karnataka the apiko the apiko movement the apiko movement that is by the pandurangra hegade one of the karnataka karnataka person which he also make an a movement to to prevent the unnecessary cutting of the trees in a western guards in a western guards he used to he used to what happens so with the help of the apiko movement he prevent the unnecessary cutting of the trees in the western guards the name of that person it is nothing but that is pandurang rao hegade and also we are we, we have a proud that under one person that is salumurda timmakka so she grown number of trees at the both she not only grows she all as she cares that plants and she provides the water she provides the food that plants to grow more at the both sides of the he her village so one of the proud daughter of karnataka that is called as a salumurda timmakka so by to what happens here the our karnataka government has also announced one project to grow pro, to, to to grow more forest or to grow more plant on her name that is called it as that the that the project that is nothing but salumarada timmakka project 2014 15 at the 2000 in 2014 and 15 karnataka government take a one step ahead to grow more plants with the with the project that is salamurda 
Timmaka project. Why? Because why they are going to take her name? Because she grow number of trees in her village and she not only grow number of trees, she, she cares that trees with providing a water and providing a food. Therefore, they take her name to make a project here that is a proud moment for us so why it is a proud moment because the trees are very helpful to us we get the food from the trees we get the shelter from the trees we get the shades from the trees we get the flowers from the tree and we get the oxygen from the trees isn't it so these are all the why because it is helpful we get uh, some uh, more number of uses from the trees that's why we can grow more trees here so that is, this is the another one important natural resource that is called it as a forest we are studied some of the renewable natural resources that are nothing but solar energy soil and a forest now i am going to consider some of, we are going to study some of the non renewable resources what are the uses of that non renewable resources first i am considering in the non renewable natural resource that is nothing but the petroleum so petroleum it is made by the dead the dead living beings the these are made by the dead living beings petroleum it is nothing but this is the rough oil which contains the diesel petrol kerosene etc it is formed by the dead remains of the living organism in the earth crust due to the about 300 million years ago what happens due to the natural disasters called earthquake and flooding the the some of the animals are living beings what happens they are going to be they, they go under the earth so due to the high temperature and pressure these natural these living beings are going to be get converted into this petroleum so therefore these petroleums are made by the dead they are formed by the dead remains of the living beings that's why these are called it as a fossil fuels fossil fuels fossil fuels are the one of the example for the non renewable natural resources so oh, the that these living organisms due to the high pressure and the temperature inside the earth so these dead the living beings are the remains of the dead living beings they are get converted into petroleum that is fossil fuel so what are the uses of the petrol and diesel you have already know here the almost of the vehicles are runs with the help of these petroleum products so the lighter vehicles like a car bicycle they are runs with the help of the petroleum and the heavier vehicles like a railway and uh, some uh, the lorries they are help they are run with the help of the diesel the petrol and the diesels are the most important products of the petroleum and also we get the kerosene from the petroleum which we are going to use in our home to cook the food and also in the petroleum product we get some of the wax that wax it is used for to uh, make the vaselines isn't it some of the wax materials which we are going to use so one of the uh, another one so one of the use that is one of the natural resource the non renewable natural resource that is nothing but the fossil fuels under the fossil fuels we studied here the petroleum the, why we are going to call it as a non renewable natural resource because in the nature it is present in the very little amount if we are going to continually use this a non renewable natural resource or this petroleum for about 100 to 200 years so these natural resources are get completed they are not they are not going to be get our future generation doesn't see no, they don't get if we are going to use continuously therefore they are considered as a non renewable natural resources and another one important non renewable natural resource that is nothing but the coal <coughs> coal it is a black material black charcoal type material which is formed by the the formed by the plants about 300 years ago what happens about 300 years ago due to the natural disasters like earthquake and the flooding the plants of the forest are buried under the earth surface when they go under the earth surface due when they go under the earth surface the large amount of the soil will be covered on the 
these plants so when how when they go uh, along or when they go deeper inside the earth surface the temperature of the earth will be increases due to the high temperature and a high pressure that these plants are get converted into the coal that are that are nothing but we are going to call it as a coal where we are going to use the coal in olden days this coal it is used in the railway engine that is a steam railway engine to provide the steam to the railway we are going to use the coal in that railway engine that railway engine runs with the help of the coal but in a nowadays this coal it is used in the thermal power plants what happens in that thermal thermal power plants why why they are going to use here because they are going to get the heat from the coal they are going to burn this coal and get the heat using that heat in the thermal power plant station they generate the electricity electricity that is under one use of the coal here and under one non renewable natural resource that is a natural gas this natural gas is also comes in the well of the petroleum at the upper part of the petroleum this gas will be present so using this natural gas we are going to we use the utilize this natural gas in nowadays in our home to cook the food that is under one non renewable natural resource that is natural gas but you have to remember here these are all present in a very little amount in our nature so we have for the for our future generation we have to conserve this non renewable natural natural resources for our future generation so we have to take some of the pre prevention steps to conserve here what are the prevention steps for example if we are going to consider the petroleum and diesel or petrol or diesel the uh, the petrol and diesel are used by our vehicle so so how we are going to prevent how we are going to pre take the prevention steps here if there is a necessary then only we are going to use the private vehicles if there is a no necessary then we should use as possible as we are going to more we, we have to use the public vehicles so by using the public vehicles we can prevent the use of the petrol and diesel that is the use of the petroleum here and second one step which we are going to take here if in unnecessary conditions like in the when you are present in the signals we have to switch up we have to off our uh, engines of our vehicles to by off by switch offing our uh, vehicles we are going to prevent the petroleum here so some of the uh, steps we are going to consider to prevent our usage of the petroleum to conserve this petroleum or to conserve this non renewable natural resources for our future generation so under one la under one last non renewable natural resource which i am going to take here the minerals so minerals are nothing but these are the rough form of the some of the elements we are going to get ores from the minerals the ores contains the definite amount of the elements here like iron gold isn't it they are going to get by the ores but the ores are present in the mineral so it is under one non renewable natural resource that are the minerals we are going to get a large amount of the iron by the minerals so by the usage of the human activities as we construct the more more buildings as we construct more buildings we utilize more amount of the iron where we are going to get that iron but we get that iron only from the earth only from the minerals but that the amount of the minerals the amount of the iron which is present in that minerals is very less by the continuous usage of that minerals they are going to be get replenished so we have to conserve that minerals also for our future generation we we restrict unnecessary construction of the buildings here so these are all about the some some of the usages and the some of the prevention methods of the non renewable natural resources so in today's session we discussed about what are natural resources what are the types of the natural resources what are the uses of the renewable resources what are the uses of the non renewable resources and this completes your under one most important chapter natural resource in next session we are going to continue your ne next lesson thank you